Welcome back to Bluegrass on this beautiful winter day. Uh, as you can see behind me, uh, we got our first snow last night. And the first snow of the year is always a lot of fun around here. You know, my children love it. They're all up on top of the hill with a bunch of dogs building snow forts and snowmen and sled and stuff. And uh, we've been down here walking dogs on the leash. And uh, it's a lot of fun when you first get up in the morning and snow and you let new puppies out because they go out and they've never experienced snow. They have no idea what this is. You know, so they'll put their face in it, they'll put their paws in it, they'll dig, they'll roll around in it. They do all kinds of crazy stuff, okay? It's, 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 it's one of the, <laughs> if you've never seen it before, guys, I mean, it's really one of the funniest things that, that you can watch. If you have a bunch of puppies together and let them play in the snow the first time. Uh, but as we, were, as we were trying to do our work this morning, uh, kind of how we normally do it, we'll do some leash walk and we we'll do some exercises, small challenges. My wife, uh, she noticed, she said, hey, Stoney, you know, these dogs sure are pulling on the leash a lot this morning. And I was like, well, of course they are, because they're seeing pulling on the leash is getting in the way of going and playing in the snow. And I thought to myself, well, of course my wife knows that. I mean, we talk about that every day, about how it takes a little while to teach the puppies to, to uh, forego what they want right now, to be able to engage in the things that they want later. You know, that's, that's what we're doing here, building attention span, building impulse control, making the dogs understand that they get access to things through indirect action. But what was different this morning is my wife was thinking about that in a general sense. So like most of the puppies that are here right now, they've been here for a little while. They're all getting ready to go home here for long. And so almost all of them had been perfect on the leash. And so from my wife's perspective, she expected them to be perfect on the leash today and then like earn their way to getting to go play in the snow. But what she didn't realize is that the snow was such a big draw, such a big source of stimulation that it changed their perception of the whole environment. Okay, and uh, like, and I had to remind her of that. And I was like, well, listen, I mean, it's a completely different environment this morning than it was yesterday. And she's like, really? The snow matters that much? And I was like, yeah, don't you remember the first time you ever got to go to an amusement park? I mean, you'd been lots of places with your parents, but the first time you went to an amusement park, wasn't it hard to pay attention? Wasn't it hard to stand in line? Wasn't it hard to sit on a bench and, and wait for your brothers and sisters to go to the, to the bathroom and come back? Of course it was, guys. And so, you know, what I had to remind my, my wife of is that the bottom line is, no matter like how good your leash training is going with a puppy, they're just gonna pull sometimes. They're just gonna be rude. They're gonna jump on a few people. They're gonna jump on some other dogs. They're gonna tangle the leash up in your legs. It's just gonna happen. And there's no magic system for making that not happen. All we can do is have a system like mine where we reduce the incidence rate of failure, okay? And I mean, not, not just my system, there's a lot of systems, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about what's the truth about getting a puppy to walk politely on a leash. All right, so let's start with Harley. Now, you know, Harley's a young lab puppy, and this morning when he got out, he started spinning around and rolling in the snow and being crazy. And uh, when my wife put him on the leash, of course he was pulling. And so <laughs> she got a little frustrated and handed him off to me, and immediately I just took his leash off, and I grabbed the other puppies, and I ran out back in my field, and uh, we just went on a big adventure. We went down in the creek, and uh, we played in the brush pile, and basically what I did is I burned all their energy off, off of them so that when I come back, I knew they would be calm, attentive, and polite, mainly because they're tired. And that's a big part of my approach, guys. I, and I know you're saying, well, Stoney, you're cheating. You know, not everybody has a big facility. Not everybody has a field or a brush pile or a creek. No, they don't. Uh, but for the people that send dogs here, that's, that's, that's a big part of the draw. You know, I'm able to utilize a set of techniques uh, based on inner energy regulation and structured activities that give me a nice, calm, and collected puppy on the leash. There are other valid strategies, okay? Now, you'll see right there, see, like Harley, he moved over there to, to see what this doodle was doing. I, un I, I understand and expect that because, like I was saying, there's no system that's perfect. There's no system that's going to give you a puppy that behaves like an adult dog. Puppies can't behave like adult dogs until they're adult dogs. So when, you know, when, you, when, when you're looking at your books or you're looking at the YouTube videos and you see somebody and they've got a piece of food out and they're giving you this strategy of, uh, like say with Harley, you might take a piece of food and you might go out and you're trying to walk him. And then if he goes to pulling, you might just stop and stand there and wait for him to look up at you, then give him his treat. Or if he's pulling, you might turn around and and go away from the thing he's pulling towards to make him feel like pulling is going to, you know, it's going to cost him space instead of giving proximity, okay? Uh, th th that's fine. I mean, that idea is fine. Uh, it's just not really <laughs> practical in real life. 
you know it's just not it's that that's just not how dog walking really goes you can practice that in your uh, garage and you can practice that in your kitchen but sometimes guys you just have to walk the dog you just have to get up and before work you have to walk that dog so you can get complete elimination and you can get the proper amount of energy regulation so your dog doesn't sit around and chew on things or bark or lick its paws or have some type of uh, other anxiety related problem okay you just have to walk them and that means that you mentally need to prepare yourself for the fact that your dog is going to pull some okay so when I come out here yes I cheat I'm the first one to admit that I'm cheating if this dog is acting too wild if it has bad manners if it's pulling on the leash yeah I just go out back you know, I go out back and I take them on a big adventure, then they're tired, then they come up here and they act like they've got some sense, okay? That's, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to pretend I'm some kind of magic dog trainer. Yeah, that's how I do it because uh, that's how I like to do it. I cheat, right? Okay, I'm not saying you can do that, right? But I'm telling you 100% for sure, you can't take a puppy this age and a treat, even a good piece of dog crack like this, and go out and practically use this technique of walking and stopping Unless you don't even have a job and you have no social uh, like uh, things that you have to get done every day, right? So th this is fine to practice. You get your treat and you can walk them around. You can lead them. You've seen me do it on my on my small challenges course a lot of times. Okay, but the reality is is that's not what's making these dogs that come here. For training walk nicely on the leash. What's making them come here and walk nicely on the leash is over the course of time they realize that walking nicely on the leash leads to getting to do what they want to do. Which means that we're going to have plenty of times where like minus the big time exercise that we do here the puppy wouldn't want to walk on the leash. Right? So I manipulate. You know how I'm always talking about there's three ways to affect change in a dog's behavior. Exercise, because a tired dog's a good dog. Structured positive reinforcement activity, because the dog is busy doing the right thing, you know, can't be doing the wrong thing. And then some type of direct physical intervention. Right? I like to emphasize the first two, because look what it gives me. Back up, cameraman, and show them. Now this puppy's only maybe 17, 18 weeks old, and look how quietly it's sitting there. I could pretend that it's sitting there quietly like that because I, I walked around out here on the course and I would stop and wait for it to stare at me and give it a treat, okay? That's disingenuous, that's not true. It's sitting there and being good, primarily because I took it out and I exercised it. And while I exercised it, it wasn't being perfect, okay? And this morning when, I, when my wife first went to put him on the leash, he wasn't being perfect, he pulled on the leash. Is that the end of the world? No, it's not that big a deal, okay? Come on, Harley, let's go. Now, we'll go ahead and walk Harley, and I'll show you what I mean about this. Like, you'll notice that we haven't walked, like there's a lot of snow and very few tracks on the small challenges course because I, I, I couldn't do the small challenges course when it's slippery if the dogs are pulling on the leash and being full of, uh, you know, like uh, pee and vinegar, you know? So we're gonna come up here. This dog's gonna have to really be able to concentrate to be able to navigate these pieces of equipment, you know, with the snow. And it's not gonna work out perfectly. Guys, this is like leash walking. You see, y'all watch me walk on this course all the time and the dogs do it perfectly. Today it's snowing and this dog's not gonna be able to do it perfectly. All right, so what I have to do is I have to think in terms of like uh, making it easier for him in the way that I position my body. I might have to lower my standards for the day. Come on, come on Apollo, you can do it. I might have to go back and do things two or three or four times, all right? But like if I get up and I pretend like just getting my treat out and showing the dog the treat is going to make him able to navigate this new set of environmental circumstances, I'm being disingenuous. And a lot of those books and a lot of those videos that you watch where they talk about doing treat work where you, you know, you just kind of go out and if your dog's pulling on the leash, you stop and you just wait, you know, and, and wait for him to calm down and then you give him a treat. Those are disingenuous also. That's not true because like if that's what you're practicing in dog training class, how the heck do you even get into dog training class, right? You have to get out of your car <laughs> to get into dog training class. So can't you just see <laughs> a whole bunch of people waiting to go in a building, standing there, their dogs are pulling, they just stand there like this. Class starts at seven o'clock, at 7.45, they're still standing there waiting. You know, the dog looks at them, they take two steps, the dog pulls on the leash, they have to wait, take two steps. They would never even get to training class. They would have to get there at eight o'clock in the morning for a seven o'clock at night class, all right? <laughs> so it's just not gonna happen. You just got to realize, guys, the dog's going to pull on the leash. 
right? And you're going to work with your puppy, and they're going to get better at not pulling on the leash between, say, you know, 8 and 23, 24 weeks. They're going to be pretty good maybe at six months. But then uh, that adolescent period is really going to kick in, and uh, then they're going to start pulling on the leash again. Okay, and, and, and that's it. That's just the truth of it. Now, if you really read those books and you really watch the people that write those books or make those videos, what they're actually doing most of the time is they always will have like some element of correction in their positive reinforcement training. Okay, and they'll use a euphemism, right? Like uh, stop and redirect or pulses on the leash. All right, that's just a that's just a that's just a soft way of saying, you know, like if the dog goes to pull it on the leash, they're going to jerk the leash. I guess, you know, that's 1970s, Barbara Woodhouse right there. Dog pulls on the leash, you jerk the leash, and the dog learns not to pull on the leash anymore. <laughs> that's, it's real simple, okay? Uh, because those people that write those books and teach those classes, they have to get to class. You know, they have to work. They have to get things done, just like you do. And so, like, if you see them out there and uh, on their video or in their book, they're talking about, oh, if your dog goes to pulling on the leash, well, just stop and wait for it to, to not pull on the leash and just keep doing that until it complies. Or stop and wait for it to look at you before you start moving forward. Okay, here's what I'm going to tell you. Get to dog training class early. Go out to the parking lot and watch them get out of the car and see if that's what they actually do. Okay? And I guarantee you, 100%, that's not what they do. What they do is they get out of the car and if they have a new puppy, if they have a new puppy, okay, they just walk in the building. And that puppy will be pulling and uh, carrying on, and they'll have their dog tra training thing. They'll have two or three dogs on a leash, and they'll be dragging some dog training equipment, and the puppies will be like sled dogs. Okay? That's the truth of it. That's what they don't show you on the internet. Okay? And that's what, uh, you know, I mean, that's what I would run into here if I wasn't able to make them so tired. I literally just make them so tired they can't pull on the leash. Come on, come on. Very nice. So, I get that email over and over and over again, Stoney, I'm doing all these techniques, but the dog's still pulling on the leash. Okay, it happens to me too. I mean, like, if I was to have to get up tomorrow morning, not exercise these dogs, go downtown, uh, you know, with this 17 or 18 week old puppy, come on buddy, then of course I would have to kind of expect, <laughs> I would have to kind of expect that he's going to pull for the first few minutes that we're out and about, you know, oh you can do it. Just like I'm having to right now, really make sure that I'm patient with him because he's having to do everything very slowly because like he's afraid. This is a low traction environment. And so he's kind of afraid that he's gonna fall off there. Come on, you can do it. You know, and so I'm helping him work his way through it. Very nice. Good dog. Okay, so so basically, you know, what I want to tell you is that I'm not knocking any of those ideas about how to introduce polite leash walking, okay? I am just simply trying to give you some insight into the fact that they don't work like the books and videos tell you. It's just that simple. They just don't work that well, okay? Like uh, if, uh, if, if I had to sum it up in, in, in one thing, the biggest source of disappointment in the dog training world uh, comes from trainers setting unrealistic expectations. It's just that simple, you know, and whenever a dog trainer tells you that they've got some kind of special treat in their pocket, right, that's better than a deer, that's better than a kid on a bicycle, that's better than, uh, you know, a, a girl, you know, that's what I always say, girls and squirrels will get your dog every time. Okay, they're, they're just not telling you the truth, okay? Um, or maybe they are telling you the truth, but they're not telling you the truth and explaining the timeline uh, over which that technique will be effective. If you want to do the old walk and stop thing, okay guys, you're going to be able to do it a part of the day. But you're not going to really be able to do it every day when you walk your dog. And so what that means is while you're making a little bit of progress here and there with the walk and stop and the waiting for the dog to look at you and to give them the treat and all that, there's still going to be a big part of the day where you just have to look forward, decide where you're going, and walk, and that dog might not like it, and you just got to keep walking, right? I mean, you're big and they're little, so they can't really stop you. And so, like, don't, you don't have to send me any more emails saying, Stoney, is it okay to keep walking if my dog doesn't want to walk, right? My dog doesn't want to get out of the car. It doesn't want to go into the building. It doesn't want to go into the house. It doesn't want to go into the yard. Guys, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? You're not a slave to the dog, right? Don't let anybody convince you that if you can't get a dog to do something for a treat that you're some kind of bad dog owner. No, sometimes in life things have to get done, right? So I'm giving you permission right, from my moral authority of being a YouTube influencer, right? It's okay just to walk and it's okay to understand that your dog's going to pull until it's older and has gotten a habit of not pulling because it's gradually become desensitized to the environment. That's it, you know. And if you want to send your dog off for training, let's just be honest, guys. No amount of like just treat work or electric collar work or leash and collar work is going to give you a dog that comes home and, and really is able to concentrate in high distraction environments for you, right? The only thing ultimately that's going to give you that is to get your dog out and put them in high distraction environments until the novelty wears off of those situations. Okay, so I, I hope today's a little video on leash walking. I know it wasn't a, a hundred percent, it wasn't really an instructional, okay, but I hope it helps you like feel a little bit better about practicing leash manners with your dog and it not working like they told you it was going to work.